Following the devastating floods in New South Wales and Queensland, many residents will be in need of urgent repairs to their homes. But in the wake of a disaster, dodgy tradesmen will target people in need of help. So how do we avoid falling into their trap? Well, site foreman for Tarrell Building, Brad Trithowen, joins us this morning. Brad, good to see you. We haven't brought in a dodgy trademark. We've brought in the best. Yes. Oh, well, I hope so. <laughs> Mate, uh, how do you spot a dodgy tradie, though? Well, I mean, it's, it can be hard. I mean, the first thing you want to do is check the licence and make sure they've got, got all their insurances. And that's quite simple by just going on the Department of Fair Trading and just pressing check licence. Right. But the thing is, there's still a lot of cowboys out there that are licensed. So how do you then pick the right one? So pretty much what I've found is the best way is references. Just get them to give you phone numbers of past jobs that they've used. Yep. Give them a call, just make sure that the whole job went okay. If you know a, uh, probably some friends or family that actually use that same tradie and they were really happy, mm. quite simple, that's the guy you use. Right, okay. okay. So yeah. what are some of the red flags then when people are looking to hire a tradie? What should they look out for? They... Yeah, I mean, I think probably a big one would be asking for too much of a de deposit. Mm -hmm. you know, 10, 20 per cent, that's fine. You know, it kicks them off, they can go get materials. But when they start in us, say, look, we want 50% or 100%, you just stay right away. That is just way too much. They should have capital behind them to get the job started anyway. Okay. So how can residents avoid then being ripped off by a dodgy con man? Um, I mean, that's it's luck of the draw sometimes. It is, it is quite hard. A friend of mine's just gone through hell with this, and they, yep. they and, you know, then they push back. And, you, and especially if it's a woman calling a trade in, I hate to say that, but yep. you know, this is a woman who was calling, and they, he just pushed back so hard that she just felt like she had to say yes to stuff. Yeah, yeah, they push pretty hard. Yeah, but it's they're like they're it's like being a, a salesman that just go into the the building industry, and they just push and push until you sign on the dotted line. But any contract that's say over twenty thousand, you want to get homeowners warranty on that contract as well. If they're not willing to provide that, then you start running. You get yeah. right out of there because that means they are dodgy and they don't have, they can't acquire a homeowner's warranty for that job. Yeah, so we're just looking at that list there. Um, also, beware of door-to-door uh, -door tradesmen. Yeah. And, yep. and make sure you get many quotes. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's the, that's the biggest one. I mean, a lot of people get stuck where they'll get one quote and go, wow, I didn't think it'd be that much. And then they just stick with it, pay the deposit, and they're probably getting ripped off. You should stick to a good two to three quotes. I think three quotes, because then you can really compare the three. You can go, OK, well, this one's most expensive. That's, that's the least expensive. This guy's about in the middle. Then you check, do a bit of a background search and get references, and then you can properly choose. But you'll also know that the guy's pretty, probably dodgy if, say, if it's a $10,000 job, mm -hmm. and then a guy comes in at 20000 mm. well, you know straight away he's going to rip you off. Right. But you've also got to watch out for a guy that comes in at 3000 mm. So he's either missed something pretty dramatic or something's going on. So consumers are legally entitled to a 10-day cooling-off period. However, like under these circumstances, there are some residents out there who may just want to waive this in, just yeah. to get these repairs done, particularly after a disaster like these floods. Yep. So is that a good idea or should we still... Have that cooling off period. Yeah, I mean, you should. I mean, that gives you time to do a bit of a background search, uh, check. But people, I can understand, I flooded at my house. Mm. So my property went under. So I do know, I do understand what these people are going through. And Who'd you just, call, Brad? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going to call? Just, yeah, they just want to get this stuff done quick and fast and get it all sorted and get back to normal. But you really should stick to the 10-day cooling off period. Now, if you do end up rushing it and trying to waive it, and then you try and pull out of the contract before that time, but you've already agreed and you've signed on the dotted line, you could be in a bit of trouble with the builder because, uh, yeah, he pretty much can do what he wants. OK. Right. Great, great, great to have your advice, man. Good to see you. Thanks, yep. Brad. Stay dry. <laughs>